Hey guys, so in this video I want to talk about energy problems involving springs. Let's check it out. So we're first going to look into energy problems with horizontal springs. But before I talk about energy, let me remind you that when we had problems involving springs and stationary objects, we solved these using forces. Um, F equals ma and also the spring force. Let, let me remind you about the spring force. Um, if I push against the spring like this, in such a way that the spring compresses a distance x, the force that you apply, or that I apply, Fu, has the same magnitude as the force of the spring, except that the spring will be pushing back this way. So this is the force applied by you, and the spring will push back this way. And this equation here, it's called Hooke's Law, um, there's a negative sign here. Remember what the negative tells you is that if you push this way, so the spring moves this way, the spring will push back the opposite direction. So that negative just tells you that the force of the spring is opposite to the way that you compress the spring, or if you stretch, it's out the other way. So it's opposite to the deformation. That's all that negative does. And for practical purposes, I like to ignore that negative because it's just telling me conceptually that there's a difference in direction. So I like to think of it as this, that your force is the same as the force of the spring, and that equals kx where x is the deformation and k, remember, is the spring force constant or the spring coefficient. It's a measurement of how strong uh, the spring is. Cool. Now, that's with stationary objects. With objects, uh, when you have uh, springs and moving objects, we're going to use energy instead. We can't use forces. We have to use energy. And then the last point that I want to mention here before we do an example is that springs are always going to be massless, um, at least in, in, in basic physics. Springs will be considered massless to make things simpler. And because of that, they won't have kinetic energy or gravitational potential energy. And you can look at the equation and see this right away. Kinetic energy requires a mass. Springs are massless. Uh, potential energy, gravitational potential energy requires a mass, but springs will be uh, light and therefore considered uh, massless. Elastic energy is half kx squared, so springs will only have elastic energy. Um, so the only time we're going to have kinetic energy or gravitational potential energy is if there's a block which has a mass that is touching um, the spring. Okay, let's do an example here, then we got a practice problem and let's knock this out. So I have your four kilogram block, so mass equals four is on a smooth horizontal for surface, so it looks horizontal there. Smooth, no friction. You push the block against the horizontal spring that is attached to a wall with a constant horizontal force. So you're going to push against the block like this, right? So this is you pushing against the block. And then obviously the block was going to, or the spring is going to push back against you. Um, you push against the block. And when this force is 100 newtons, so when this force here is 100 newtons, which means this force is also going to be 100 because of action reaction, the spring will have compressed a distance of 20 centimeters. So here's the idea. Let's say it starts here, and then you push all the way to here. When this force at this point right here is 100, it means that you will have compressed a distance um, d or x um, of 0.2 meters. This is 100 newtons. Okay, And then when you release the block, obviously if you compress the spring this way, when you release, what is it going to do? The spring is going to extend back. Springs are always trying to go back to their zero, to their equilibrium position, the point where they're uncompressed or not deformed, right? They are at their relaxed natural state. So the spring is going to push back and so you're going to release here, and then the spring is going to push back this way. Okay, so this is going to be our initial position, and our initial compression is 0.2 because I've compressed 0.2, and my initial velocity or speed is zero because I'm going to compress, hold it there, and then release from rest. And it's going to push out this way. When you're back here, your final compression will be zero, and then if you read the question, eventually we're going to ask. What is the block's launch speed? So I want to know what is the final velocity? Launch speed is the velocity with which the spring launches the block, obviously. And that happens when the spring is back to its, um, to its equilibrium. And that's because at that point, 
the spring will stop and then the block keeps going. All right, so um, let's see. First question here is actually what is the spring's force constant or spring coefficient or the stiffness of a spring? It's K, so let's try to find K. Um, the only, um, there are two equations where K shows up. One of them is this one here, the force F equals KX, or this one here, the potential energy. So I'm going to have to use one of these two equations to find K. And if you look at all the information you're given, you're given the force and the compression. Since those are the only two pieces of information that I have, it should be pretty obvious that I should be using the F equals KX equation. So once again, the force of U has the same magnitude as the force of the spring, which is KX. Your force is 100. I'm looking for K. X is 0.2. So when I hold it at 0.2, it requires a force of 100. So K is 100 divided by 0.2. K is 500 newtons per meter. All the units are, the we're using all the right units. So you get the units of newton per meter. That's part A. Um, for part B, make a little space here. For part B, we're being asked, what is the maximum potential energy? Now, potential energy here, there's no gravitational potential energy because we're on the floor level. So potential energy here means the maximum elastic potential energy. Now, elastic potential energy is half kx squared. K is a constant. It's not going to change. But if I want the greatest possible value of u, I need to have the greatest possible value of x because the other numbers are constants. So if I want to maximize one, I have to maximize the variable on the other side. And the maximum compression you can have in this situation, the maximum compression that you do have is the point 0.2, right? So it's basically asking what is the potential energy right here when the spring is fully compressed, or not fully compressed, but compressed to the, uh, the most, right? Uh, maybe it could have been compressed a little bit more. Anyway, so let's plug in these numbers. Half K is 500. X is 0.2 squared, right? And if you plug all this in, I have it here, you're going to get 10 joules. So K is 500. Potential energy max is 10 joules. Let me put a little max here. And now for part C, so just real quick here, I had to use this equation because it's the only one that had all the variables I needed. Um, this was straightforward. I was asking for the potential energy, so you plug all the numbers you have into the potential energy equation. Now here, this problem is talking about two points. It's saying, if I release here, what's the speed over here? So I'm going to use energy, right? Because I have a moving spring, um, so I'm going to use energy. So kinetic initial plus potential initial plus work non-conservative is kinetic final plus potential final. There's no kinetic energy at the beginning because you push, hold it there, and then you release it from rest. There is potential energy, elastic potential energy, because the spring is compressed. As long as you have an X, then you have a potential energy. There's no work done by non-conservative forces. Non-conservative forces uh, are friction, there's no friction here, or um, external forces. A spring force is a conservative force, so it doesn't count as non-conservative. There is going to be a kinetic final right here. There's a velocity, and that's actually what I want to calculate. What is that velocity or speed? But there is no potential because at the end of this, the launch speed happens when you've crossed zero, um, and you, at that point, your potential energy is zero. Um, if you look here, what's happening is that all your potential energy, which is the stored energy due to the, due to the fact that you compressed against the spring, goes entirely into kinetic energy. So your compression gets transferred into speed, right? So let's do this. Half um, half kx squared. This is initial. I'll put a little i there. And this is half mv squared. And that's final, so I'll put a half there. Notice that the masses won't cancel. Anytime you have a spring problem like this, masses will not cancel like we're used to seeing most of the time. Okay? And if I want to know uh, v final, which is what we're looking for, v final, I can move the m to the other side, and then I can take the square root of both sides. At this point, obviously, you can just plug in a bunch of numbers, but I do want to show that this x technically gets out of there, right? So if you want to make this, I guess, nicer or neater, uh, not probably not necessary unless your professor wants you to make it as, as, as cute as possible towards the end. Um, 
but you know this is the simplest form you can have now we can we can plug in some numbers here k is 500 we solved that earlier mass is 4 we were given that and the initial position we're given as well that's 0 0.2 and if you do all of this you get 2.24 meters per second okay and that's our final velocity which is our launch speed cool so that's it for this one i have a practice problem for you guys that's basically the opposite instead of you launching a spring um, launching a block with a spring there's a block that will hit a spring and compress against it and i want you to give the, i want you to give this a shot and hopefully you get it right let's try it